So today we're going to be going over thin walled shafts in torsion. So up to this point we've been going over torsion when it comes to different cross-sectional areas of shafts as well as them being solid up to this point. Let me go ahead and draw the cross-sectional area of a circular shaft that's solid with the shear stress distribution. So here's the circular shaft in torsion and we see the shear stress distribution across the diameter of this shaft and we see the maximum shear stress is being at the top or the surface of this shaft. And of course the maximum shear stress equation is the torque times the radius divided by the polar moment of inertia. Now what happens when it comes to thin wad shafts, in this case it being hollow? Let me, let me go ahead and draw the stress distribution for a hollow shaft or a thin wad shaft. So now for a thin wad shaft, of course since this is hollow it's not going to ex be experiencing any shear stress along here, only along this thin wad. Here is the shear stress distribution as you can see from the top section and the bottom section. Now just imagine this um, shaft wall being much much thinner. So you see these two points here, they would be so close such that this would almost be the same, right? So it would almost be kind of like a straight line if you just keep imagining this sh this um wall being thinner and thinner. These two points will get so close that essentially it just becomes a straight line here. And this is where you could actually uh, approximate it for uh, to the average shear stress. Now this average shear stress was was actually derived and you could reference a, a book when it comes to strengths of materials for that information. But the equation for this average shear stress for thin watt shafts would be the torque divided by two times the mean cross-sectional area times the thickness. Now the cross-sectional area, the mean cross-sectional area is the cross-sectional area of the shaft with the mean area being right at the center of this shaft. Whatever the thickness is, we draw this center, center line halfway of that wall, right? So this is going to be T divided by 2, the thickness divided by 2. And everything within that cross-section would be our mean cross-sectional area. So this is the equation used for the average shear stress, specifically for a thin wad shaft. Now let's go ahead and do a comparison of solving for the maximum shear stress between a solid or a hollow shaft. So here we have two shafts. Um, of course, as you can see, the shafts have square cross-sectional areas and one of them is solid and the other one is hollow. Now this, we have the same outer dimensions, right? The length and the width are 30 millimeters. Of course, the hollow has a thickness of T being equal to 4 millimeters. Now, let's say we have a torque applied to these shafts, um, a torque of 100 newton meters. Now, let's go ahead and compare the shear stress that are developed within the solid shaft and within the hollow shaft. So when it comes to the square cross-sectional, the solid, we have the formula being for the shear stress of 4.81 times the torque divided by the dimension A cubed, A being the length here or the width. And so just plugging in the numbers here. So we have 4.81 times 100 newton meters divided by 0 0.03 meters cubed, which gives us 17.8 megapascals for the solid shaft. So this is the shear stress developed within the solid shaft. Now let's go ahead and do the hollow. And we're going to be utilizing that equation that we just went over for the thin watt shafts, which is the torque divided by 2, the mean cross-sectional area, and the thickness. So we have 100 newton meters divided by 2. And we have the mean cross-sectional area. Keep in mind, remember, you draw the center line within that thin wad shaft. And it's going to be right at the middle of this thickness. So each side is going to be 2 millimeters here, 2 millimeters, and also 2 millimeters here. So if you were to calculate the cross-sectional area of this mean area, 
it would be the length be 26 millimeters instead of the 30 millimeters. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So it's 26 uh, millimeters times 26 length times width converted to meters here. The thickness 0 0.004 meters, which gives us 18.5 megapascals. So one thing is to compare what the maximum shear stress is within the solid and the hollow shaft. And the shear stresses are actually pretty similar. We see for the solid, we have 17.8 megapascals. Now the shear stress developed within the hollow shaft is a little bit higher, but not by much. You could even say they are approximately the same. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that hollow shafts, they have much less material, but when it comes to the shear stresses developed for any given torque, they are approximately um, close or approximately the same as a solid shaft. So in other words, in, in a way, a way to look at it is they are more efficient, right? We have less material. However, the shear stress developed are pretty much nearly the same as a solid shaft. So that's some interesting information that may not necessarily be intuitive. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention is when it comes to this average shear stress equation, it doesn't necessarily have to apply to these um, geometric shapes, well-known geometric shapes. It could actually apply to some weird um, thin watch shaft that isn't any a circle or, or oval or it could be any shape. And so it's much more useful when it comes to do, being able to solve for the average shear stress when it comes to any any geometric shape of thin watch shafts in torsion. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. Now let's go ahead and do another example. So for this example, we have the steel shafts are connected together using a fillet weld as shown. Determine the average shear stress in the weld along section AA if the torque applied to the shaft is 60 newton meters. Note, the critical section where the weld fails is along section AA. So here we have this shaft being welded on using a fillet weld here, and you can see the dimensions given, right? We have the height of it as well as the width being 12 millimeters. We have the diameter of the shaft that's being welded onto the plate being 50 millimeters. Now, here's a, a side profile view of that shaft and the weld here. We see section AA is the critical point in which the weld, weld could fail due to the shear stress. And of course we have the dimensions again, 12 millimeters is the length and the height of that fillet weld being 12 millimeters. So now going back to that average shear stress equation, which is the torque divided by two, the mean cross-sectional area and the thickness. Um, now the question here is, wait a minute, why are we applying this average shear stress to this problem, to a weld, a fillet weld in this case, um, and not a thin um, wad shaft? In this case, we have a solid shaft being welded on, but how does this apply to the weld itself? Well, you can actually just imagine the weld being a thin wad shaft itself. It's basically combining these two parts into one and you have a torsion which will basically be applied along that weld here. If you can imagine the inner diameter and then the outer diameter of that shaft being kind of like acting as if it was a, a thin wad shaft holding things together here. Now looking at it from the top view here we have that solid shaft and we have this fillet well with the appropriate dimensions here is 12 millimeters. So we can actually apply this equation to the fillet weld and we have the average mean or the mean cross-sectional area here. So the mean area is pi r squared. In this case, the radius is 31 millimeters, which gives us a mean cross-sectional area of and gives us 0 0.00301971 meters squared. We know what the torque being applied is, 60 newton meters. 
mean area. Now all we need is the thickness. Now in this case, since the problem statement hints that the critical section along where that fillet weld um, fails is along section AA. So this portion here, this would be the thickness that we're going to be using. So we have the angles here and we have the appropriate dimension. So we just need to solve for this and which is nothing more than trig, right? So the thickness is equal to, so it's 0 0.012 meters times cosine 45 to solve for the thickness. Just um, think about using cosine, which is adjacent or T over the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse would be the 12 here which gives us the thickness of this. And now let's go ahead and plug in all this information into the average shear stress equation. Average shear stress um, for that fillet weld is 1.17 megapascals. And so this is how you use that average shear stress equation with the mean cross sectional area and the thickness of that fillet weld to solve for the average shear stress on that weld due to due to the torque being applied on the shaft. And so it definitely could be very useful. As you can see here, this is a practical application when it comes to welds.